Assalamu alaikum students this video I am preparing for explaining you complex numbers in detail uh, what you have overall taken in the 9709 course uh, related to complex numbers there are three types of complex numbers we have taken uh, the first type is called Cartesian form And that Cartesian form is when I write a complex number is equals to x plus iota y. This x is called a real part. And a number which is written with iota. And uh, most of you are familiar because guys, I'm not going uh, uh, in uh, the basic details of complex numbers. I just want to talk about what is required by the 9709 course so um, that's why because i know there are powers of iota and uh, how the real numbers um, you know gives you the possibility of a complex number then we talked about imaginary numbers so there are so many things so anyways uh, um, the basic thing is uh, i which is an imaginary number and people call it as iota and it is equal to square root of minus one so iota is equal to square root of minus 1 and iota square is minus 1. These basic results you must know uh, for this exam. Otherwise, if any iota power comes, you can use the calculator. So y is imaginary part. The number, uh, the, the component which is with iota, that is imaginary part. And uh, the number which is um, without iota, that is a real part of a complex number. Uh, the second type is, we call it polar form of a complex number. Polar form has two things. Uh, one is called R. And in the brackets, we have cosine theta plus iota sine theta. This is called polar form and it stands on two important results. Number one is R and this R is called modulus of a complex number. Modulus of a complex number. In upcoming part, I will talk about the geometrical, uh, um, you know, the significance of R. So here R is the magnitude or the modulus of a complex number. However, here um, inside it, in this inside the bracket, we have cosine theta, which is a real part, and sine of theta, which is an imaginary part because it is with iota. Uh, what is this theta actually? So, guys, this theta is called argument of a complex number. Modulus is always positive, so R is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero it is possible theta is can be it it can be in degrees or in radians so the principal argument which we take it uh, within one rotation it is from minus 180 to 180 included or minus pi this is in degrees and it is in radians to pi So this one is your polar form. Uh, Sometimes we write the polar form in a concise way like R C theta. So C I S tells you that cosine theta plus iota sine theta in a concise form you can write it as R C theta. The third form which is in our course that is the Ehlers form of a complex number. So complex number can be written in the Ehlers form or exponential form. Exponential form. That is what that stands on modulus and the argument. Pretty simple. Z is equal to R e raised per iota theta because e raised per iota theta it is equal to cosine theta plus iota sine theta. So cosine theta plus iota sine theta in the polar form can be replaced by e iota theta. 
this looks more simpler and this is called a polar form uh, the Ehlers form of a complex number the r is again modulus and theta is argument of a complex number so i hope guys you understood very well um, the three forms of a complex number number one is cartesian number two is polar and the number three is Ehlers form or exponential form now i want to talk about how the cartesian form can be converted into polar form or Ehlers form suppose i have z is equals to uh, 1 plus 1 iota this is a complex number and i have another complex number i'm going to change one of the sign minus 1 plus iota and uh, this complex number is minus 1 minus iota and the third one is a uh, fourth one is uh, i'm going to write 1 minus iota right so as you can see here x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 in this case x is equal to minus 1 y is equal to 1 x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to minus 1 x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 1 the formula to get r i'm gonna write it here it is square root of x square plus y square it will give you the modulus of a complex number so I'm trying to find it 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 1 plus 1, which is 2. Same thing, guys. We will apply the formula here. R is equals to uh, x squared plus y squared. So minus 1 whole square is basically 1 squared plus 1 squared. That is also square root of 2. And here the modulus is also square root of 2 and um, square root of 2. Modulus of a complex number is not a big deal. Now come to the argument. For the argument, you need to know that your polar form, you know, your complex number is in which quadrant of the diagram. I will tell you which diagram I'm talking about. But as a point, this is 1, 1. This is minus 1, 1. And this is minus 1, minus 1. And 1, minus 1, minus 1. So these points can be shown on the grid. And there is a special type of a diagram which is not called rectangular coordinate system which is called a ergon diagram in, in, in detail i will tell you about the ergon diagram uh, but for this uh, explanation i just want to tell you that um, the ergon diagram is like this uh, instead of x-axis we will say this is my real axis and this is my imaginary axis so uh, the first complex number which uh, i have taken um, that stands in here in the first quadrant uh, so one one is here if you see the second complex number that is standing in the second quadrant which is minus one and one if i look into the third complex number minus one minus one it is standing in the third quadrant and if i see the fourth complex number it is standing in the uh, fourth quadrant right so 1 minus 1 now principal argument for this complex number is starting from the uh, from the real axis positive real, real axis to the line which is uh, joining origin with 0.11 so principal argument is inverse tan keep the positive signs y is 1 so i will write y over x so the formula is inverse tan of 1 over 1 from the calculator it is 45 degree or in radian it is pi by 4 so my argument is pi by 4. now if the complex number is falling in the second quadrant so you have to move all the way from the positive x-axis in the uh, anti-clockwise direction so this angle will be 135 and how do you calculate it uh, you, uh, you know, you have to write it directly. Theta is equals to uh, pi minus inverse tan of y over x because your uh, point is in the second quadrant. So 180 minus so the uh, 180 minus 45 degrees 
will give you 135 or I think it is 3 pi by 4 in radians. If the angle is following in the third quadrant here, uh, now rather than moving from the um, from the positive x-axis and uh, rotated anti-clockwise, now we will go like this direction. So here the theta will be not pi plus, I will write minus pi plus inverse tan of 1 over 1. Don't use some negative signs. So minus pi plus pi by 4 is give me minus 3 pi by 4. Clear? It's minus uh, 135 degrees we have to take, but in the clockwise direction. And if the complex number is following in this quadrant, so I have to move in a clockwise direction, which is minus 45. So theta is equals to, simple thing is minus inverse tan of y over x, which is minus inverse tan of 1 over 1. And I'm going to write minus pi by 4 or, or minus 45 degrees. Clear? So the Ergen diagram, the formula which we will use to send any angle into any quadrant depending on what is the value of x and what is the uh, what is the sine of x and what is the sine of y. So if you have here positive x, positive y, if you have negative x, uh, positive y, negative x, negative y and uh, positive x and negative y, in this quadrant the formula is just theta okay uh, if i take in degrees so it will be 180 degree okay um, but uh, if you want to move in third and fourth quadrant it will be minus theta and minus 180 degree plus theta so first quadrant angle is theta okay and uh, second quadrant angle is 180 minus theta if the complex number falls here if your complex number falls in the third quadrant the 1 and minus 180 plus theta and then finally guys if your uh, complex number falls in the fourth quadrant so then your angle will be minus theta so i have explained it to you how to convert uh, the complex number the cartesian form into the polar form we did it now, what is the conjugate of a complex number? Uh, if I give you any complex number, 2 plus 3 iota, and you want to write the conjugate, mostly they put a star on a uh, complex number, and that, that gives you the conjugate like this, so 2 minus 3 iota. So 2 minus 3 iota, you just need to change the sign of the um, of the imaginary part uh, if you change the imaginary don't change the sign of the real part just change the uh, sign of the imaginary part your complex number will be converted into its conjugate okay uh, one more example i can take it for example u is equals to minus 3 plus 4 iota so the conjugate of this complex number will be minus 3 minus 4 iota so i hope guys you understood very well what is the conjugate of a complex number um, conjugate uh, uh, and, and, and a complex number, they, they have a very special property. If a complex number multiplied with its conjugate, that uh, is um, important for you to understand. Yani if I have here minus 3 plus 4 iota is multiplying with minus 3 minus 4 iota, no need to multiply the two complex numbers. Just take the square of the first component plus the square of the second component. So I'm going to take 9 plus 16, which is 25. And that gives you the module, uh, you know, the, the product of the complex number with its conjugate. If you want to convert a polar form uh, or Ehlers form to Cartesian, that's also very simple. I give you a polar form like uh, 5 cosine of 30 degrees plus iota sine of 30 degrees. Now, what is my x? So, guys, x is equals to r 
cosine of 30 degrees, r is 5, and your y is 5 sine of 30 degrees, so x is equal to 5 under root 3 over 2, and y is equal to 5 times 1 over 2. I got my x, 5 square root of 3 over 2, and y is equal to 5 over 2. So the Cartesian form of this complex number is um, z equals 5 square root of 3 over 2 plus iota 5 over 2. I can convert complex number, the polar form, um, into the uh, Cartesian form. Uh, same case is for uh, Ehlers form. If I write z is equal to 5 e iota pi uh, over 6, supposedly, uh, then I know my uh, principal argument and I know my uh, modulus. So x will be what? x will be um, r cosine of pi by 6 and y will be phi r sine of pi by 6 and then you will further simplify it. So uh, uh, either he gives you polar or Cart uh, um, uh, the Ehlers form, it is easy to convert them into Cartesian form. Next stage is how to add the complex numbers in Cartesian form. Very simple. If you have 2 plus 3 iota and there is another complex number uh, minus 5 plus 4 iota, it's very easy to add the complex numbers. You add the real parts to 2 minus 5 is 3 and 3 plus 4 is 7 iota. You can also subtract the complex numbers. So 2 minus minus 5 is 7 and 3 minus 4 is minus 1 iota. Pretty simple. Uh, if the examiner says you need to multiply the two complex numbers, um, I just want to explain you the, the distributive property when the two brackets are multiplying. Apply the same technique, but keep it in your mind. Iota square will be minus 1. So here you go. 2 multiply with minus 5 is minus 10. And uh, 2 multiply with 4 iota is 8 iota. Uh, by the way, this thing can be done easily in the calculator. The simple multiplication division is possible in the calculator. So minus 15 iota and then 3 iota multiply with 4 iota will give you 3 times 4 is 12. And iota times iota is iota square, which is minus. So minus 12 and minus 10 add or subtract real parts so minus 22 plus 8 minus 15 is minus 7 iota so we can easily understand the multiplication of a complex number i want to show you how the complex numbers in cartesian forms they can be added subtracted multiplied and divided you can go to the menu side in the complex uh, you know calculator um, you know the all features uh, which are provided in the uh, menu they told you that this is a complex number i need to press 2 so i came to the complex number iota will be seen on the top now everything um, which is related to complex numbers uh, calculator can handle it otherwise if your calculator is not uh, in a complex mod and um, you try to write some imaginary numbers the calculator shows you the math error now i have two complex numbers uh, 2 plus 3 iota so 2 plus 3 uh, how to write iota press e and g automatically iota will be written over there so 2 plus 3 iota i want to add it into minus 5 plus 4 iota so guys you can check my calculator is giving me uh, the answer which is the addition of the complex number i want to also tell you how to multiply the two complex number i was having two plus three iota and uh, you want to multiply it with uh, minus five minus five plus four iota and then you can see very quickly i got the multiplication of the complex number now i need to go for division of complex numbers so when the two complex numbers are divided here the conjugate is very very important because um, I cannot work with complex number unless we have uh, multiplication. So the multiplication, the division will be changed into multiplication by using conjugate. So 2 plus 3 iota is up and minus 5 plus 4 iota is down. I need to multiply up and down with the conjugate of the denominator. So minus 5 minus 4 iota up and minus 5 minus 4 iota down 
Uh, here we do the same thing as we, what we did in the previous part, the multiplication of the two complex numbers. Huh, but in the denominator, you see that the complex number is multiplying with its conjugate. And what is the rule I have told you? Just take the component, which is minus 5. So take the minus 5 whole square, or you can write 5 squared plus always. And what is the second number? You have 4. You write 4 squared. No need to multiply the complex number with its conjugate. Just take the sum of the squares of the, uh, you know, the their uh, real and imaginary parts. Uh, on the top, we can easily multiply the complex numbers. I want to show you now how the calculator can be helpful for you in the division process. So I'm going to write here 2 plus 3 iota, and it is going to be divided by minus 5 plus 4, 4 iota, right? Minus 5 plus 4 iota. When I write it, can calculator gave me the real part separate and imaginary part separate. 2 over 41 uh, minus 23 over 41 iota, which is pretty, pretty simple for uh, you guys. Not a big deal. Um, guys, uh, next thing is um, how uh, do we do the multiplication and division uh, of complex numbers in polar form? I always tell my students, guys, polar form has an edge over Cartesian form. Why it has an edge? Because multiplication is far more easier. Like if Mr. Omar gives you so many complex numbers to multiply. It will take a lot of time if you keep on multiplying any first you multiply z1 with z2 then the final answer will be multiplied with z3 then the final answer will be multiplied with z4 it will take a lot of time if you are working in cartesian form however if you have a complex number in polar form i'm going to discuss with you very very important property i have a complex number which is r c theta 1 i have another complex number um r2 c theta 2 i have a third complex number C is theta 3. Imagine I want to add the complex numbers. Oh, sorry, not addition. Uh, maybe you guys will be thinking why addition and subtraction. For addition and subtraction, I will prefer to use um, always uh, the Cartesian form. If you have a polar form, convert it into Cartesian form, add and subtract. But multiplication division is um, much more easier in polar form. So as you see now, I'm going to multiply the three complex numbers, Z1, Z2, and z3 or uh, what happens guys if you are multiplying the complex numbers their moduli will be multiplied they will behave in the same way as what the complex number operations working on so we multiplied their moduli however what happens to the argument do we multiply their argument the answer is no uh, their arguments their arguments will be added okay their arguments will be added uh, but their moduli will be multiplied. Now, if I want to divide the complex numbers, so Z1 divided by Z2, moduli will be working as it is, as what the operation you applied on Z1 and Z2. So their moduli will be divided. However, their arguments will be subtracted. So theta1 minus theta2. This property has to be well known to you. Now, if I have a complex number, z raised to the power 5. Imagine this is r c theta power 5. How can I apply it? Look, the complex number is multiplying 5 times. So I will write the modulus power 5 and the c's, it will not be theta power 5. It will be theta plus theta plus theta plus theta, yani 5 theta. Agreed? Because the complex number is multiplied 5 times. So I have to multiply the moduli five times and however the theta has to be added five times. This is the multiplication process of uh, uh, in the polar form. That's why I love to do multiplication and division in polar form. Square root of a complex number uh, in our 9709 course we prefer to use the Cartesian form. And he gives you a complex number 2 minus 2 plus 3 iota, supposedly. Um, you can check on the calculator. Is it working? 2 plus 3 iota. I want to take the square root. Look, math error is coming. So our calculator is not capable of giving the answer. So what we need to do, uh, we can uh, um, uh, say that the square root of a complex number is always a square, uh, is always a 
complex number so it will come in this form a plus iota b where a is the real part and b is also a real part uh, now send the square root to the other side and now the equation will be turned into simple um, quadratic side you know uh, on the right hand side so a plus iota b whole square so 2 plus 3 iota and now this bracket is going to multiply two times a plus iota b and a plus iota b now open the brackets so you get a squared plus um, 2 a b iota and plus 2 a b iota and also we got minus b squared now collect the real parts uh, together a squared minus b squared and um, imaginary parts uh, we we had it here a b and a b mm. so we got 2 a b along with iota so here we have 2 plus 3 iota now compare the real parts and imaginary parts this is my real part and this is imaginary part we put them equal to each other solve the two equations simultaneously a squared minus b squared and this is 2ab it should be 3 now either you can make b as a subject in this equation or a as a subject so i'm going to make b as a subject so b is equal to 3 over 2a plug it here guys and 2 is equal to a squared minus in the place of b i'm going to write 3 over 2a whole squared it gives you 2 is equal to a squared minus 9 over uh, 4a squared and then my friends uh, you simplify it it gives you uh, yani i'm gonna multiply here with 4a4 4, uh, 4a squared multiply 4a squared multiply 4a squared to get rid of this thing uh, here it comes to you 4 8 a squared is equal to 4a4 and minus 9 and then you send this term which is on the left to the right 0 is equal to 4a4 minus 8a squared minus 9 Guys, after having this situation, I'm going to uh, try to solve this um, quadratic equation by using the cal equation mod polynomials, degree 2, enter 4, enter minus 8, enter minus 9. The calculator gave me the answer in a third form, um, 2 plus square root of 13. So in a decimal form is a square is equal to 2.803. 2.803 what is the second answer i'm getting um the second answer i'm getting minus 0 0.803 so a square is equal to minus 2.803 my friends we always reject this because uh, the square of us real numbers cannot be a negative number it's not possible so just ignore it now a is equal to plus minus square root of 2.803 this is these are the two values of a you found it now you need to plug it here to get the two values of b so 2a is um, if you use plus minus sign um, and uh, 2.803 whatever the answer comes so we get two complex numbers um, one is uh, square root of 2.803 and right here plus iota uh, 3 over 2 square root of 2.803 i did not evaluate it in decimals but uh, uh, if both answers any if a is positive uh, then your b is positive the second answer will be my a negative you will get b negative but if your a is negative and you are getting a positive b so the second answer will be plus a and minus b the square root of a complex number is always um, having uh, uh, two same uh, answers but uh, their signs will be opposite to each other in the real parts the real part will change the sign and imaginary parts will change the sign for that ergon diagram i have already explained it to you guys that uh, um, ergon diagram is um, in which we replace the x-axis by real axis and the y-axis by uh, imaginary Access. So you can write in the exam, I am here and here is RE for the real. This is your origin of a complex number. Mm, any complex number can be shown here by a point. For example, this is XY or a complex number can be shown by as a vector as well. So uh, the vector is this is XY. 
okay the magnitude of a complex number which is called modulus of a complex number um, i think i need to explain you in detail the modulus uh, of a complex number and the argument guys you remember this is y and this is x this is theta and theta is the argument and the direct distance from the origin that is called modulus r so r is a distance of a complex number on the ergon diagram from the origin right r is what and theta is your argument you need to know your theta argument is positive if it is positive you need to move anti clockwise if it is positive you need to move anti clockwise if it is negative you need to move clockwise loci uh, there are three loci uh, you know in complex number the first one is circle circle uh, when he says absolute of z is equal to 2 so absolute of z and yani the, the magnitude of all those complex numbers from the origin is 2 so it means i need to draw a circle two units from here two units from here two units from here two units from here so these are every complex number has a distance two units from the origin in general i will talk it talk about like z uh, plus a plus iota b uh, or let me write it here with negative signs negative a negative iota b is equal to 2 then it tells you that a complex number center is at change their signs your center is a b this is a this is a and this is b and uh, you need to go two units up two units down two units right two units left and then you join the points and you get the circle uh, in locus guys um, i can write inequalities like uh, z minus 4 plus 2 iota less than equals to 2 uh, it tells you a circle, uh, inside circle, and also I include the boundary line. Um, I'm going to draw it. Uh, what is the center I have? Center is 4 and minus 2, and the radius is 2. Uh, 4 and minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. In the exam, you do it like this, 4 and 2 units up. Now, he says, if this is the center, I have to go two units up because my radius is up and two units down, two units right and two units to the left. Keep the equal distance and then draw a circle, solid circle because you have a solid line and everything inside will be included. That is the locus which is represented by this inequality. If this is a strict inequality in the exam, he has used z minus 2 plus 4 iota less than 3, then this less than sign means your circle will be dotted. But you need to take everything inside it. If I take z minus 2 plus 4 iota uh, greater than equals to 2, then it means I need to take the solid circle solid circle but i have to consider all the outside portions the second locus uh, we have is the perpendicular bisector if i have a complex number z minus 2 plus 4 iota is equal to z minus 3 now i need to get one point from here a point is 2 minus 4 from here the b point is 3 but there is no imaginary part zero. We need to plot these points on the uh, ergon diagram. So two minus four is here. This is my A point and three zeros, guys. This is my B point. Now, what I'm, I need to do, I need to draw the perpendicular bisector. And perpendicular bisector is a, uh, is, is a line which uh, uh, cuts the AB line in the mid and it, is, it should be perpendicular. So please, uh, examiner will not uh, look uh, into that, is it very correctly drawn, perpendicular bisector. Some students, they can use the compass uh, method to draw the correct perpendicular bisector, but you can show it like this. This is 90 degree and it is cutting at the midpoint. So this is the locus. 
since he used the equal sign, every complex number on this perpendicular bisector is satisfying this locus. Um, but if he says z minus 2 is less than uh, z plus uh, 2 iota, now it tells you the a point is 2, 0, and it tells you the b point is 0, minus 2. Uh, less than tells you this is nearer, and greater than sign tells you it is further. So first we need to draw on the Ergen diagram uh, 2, 0. This is 2, 0, and 0, minus 2. Okay, I'm ready to draw the perpendicular bisector. Uh, is it a dotted line or a solid line? It is a dotted line. So I'm going to draw the dotted line. The moment you draw the dotted line, guys, uh, you have to know where you said uh, less than, you know, this thing, nearer. So nearer portion has to be shaded. So I'm going to shade this whole portion because I am taking those complex numbers which are closer to A, further from B. Same situation applies for the B. Uh, last locus, it is a half line. And this relates with the argument. If I say argument of a complex number my z minus 2 is um, equal to 30 degrees uh, or pi by 6, it tells you that your center is your center is 2, 0. So where is 2, 0? This is 2, 0. I need to draw a half line from here because argument is positive 30 degrees. Draw a straight line and it moves forever. This is 30 degrees. Modulus is changed. You, you see that the complex numbers uh, distance from the origin is changed, but um, uh, the uh, argument stays the same. So you will move on the same track, the same straight line. So this is the half line for this complex number. If he says that argument uh, z minus 2 less than um, suppose 90 degrees, so you know now where is uh, z minus 2? The point is 2, 0. Uh, this is 2, 0. And uh, you draw the 90 degree. Now, less than or greater than. So since it is less than, so you need to shade all this portion. And he has to say like that because this is 0 degrees and this is 90 degrees. You have to shade all these things. Otherwise, if he doesn't mention, you have to shade all the previous one because it is starting from minus pi to 2 pi. Uh, that's all what we took in complex numbers. Thank you, boys. If any question comes, please do let me know about that.